What's up guys and welcome to Grip EDU. I'm Mr. D and hey, before we get started, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button so you can get every one of our new videos and help others find us too. We're gonna talk today about dividing fractions. But don't worry, it's not as hard as you might think. In fact, like many math things, once you know it, it's really not that hard, you just need to know how to do it in the first place. Now this lesson is gonna combine some of the skills that have been covered in previous videos, such as cross simplifying and multiplying fractions. So if you're not comfortable with these skills, you may wanna go give those videos a glance and then come back here and get going with this lesson. Now let's get started with dividing fractions. Here's our problem. 2 thirds divided by 1 fifth. But before we get going too far, let's take a step back and find out what we're actually trying to do. What does 2 thirds divided by 1 fifth mean? It means how many 1 fifth pieces can fit into 2 thirds. Let's think of this regular division problem. 10 divided by 2. When we solve this, we're finding out how many 2's can fit into the number 10. So it's the same thing with division of fractions. We're trying to find out how many of that second number can fit into the first number. We could try to model it with these shapes on the screen. How many one-fifth pieces fit into the two-third pieces? One, two, three, and then like a little extra. So three and something, right? Well, there's gotta be a mathematical way to figure this out, right? The way you solve a division of fraction problems is by doing this. And this is a fancy pants math phrase. It's called multiply by the reciprocal. Now, what's a reciprocal? Well, actually that's pretty easy. It just means the reverse or the opposite. Okay, so for instance, put your hand out in front of you like this. Now, the reciprocal would mean like just flipping your hand the other way, like this. In fact, you can do this motion and say the word reciprocal to help you remember. All right, let's try it, ready? Reciprocal, it means flipped around. So when it comes to fractions, the reciprocal of something like 3 sevenths would be flipped to become seven over three. The reciprocal of 4 fifths would be flipped around five over four, you get it? So in our problem, we're going to leave the first fraction the same, don't change that number, but we're gonna multiply it by the reciprocal of the second fraction. So we're turning that one over five into five over one. All right, quick timeout though. In some problems, you'll have to divide a fraction by a whole number, such as uh, four ninths divided by six. If that happens, you need to remember that a whole number is equal to that number over one. So six in this example should be thought of as six over one, but the reciprocal of that would be what? one over six. So if you had to solve a problem like four ninths divided by six, you'd solve it by doing four ninths times one over six because that's the reciprocal of six, okay? All right, now back to our original problem. We're multiplying by the reciprocal. Two thirds times five over one. And from here, we just treat it like a multiplying fractions problem. And how do we do that? We check for cross simplifying, and then we multiply straight across. We can't cross simplify here because the diagonal pairs don't share any common factors besides one, so it's time to just multiply straight across. Two times five is 10, and three times one is three. So we've got the beginning of our answer, which is 10 over three. Now we simply turn it back into a mixed number, and we've got our answer, all right? Three times what gets you the closest to 10? That'd be three, that's your whole number. Now, three times three is nine. How many more to get up to 10? One, that is your numerator. And your denominator will stay the same. So your final answer here is three and one third. All right, quick review now. To divide fractions, you need to what? Multiply by the reciprocal. Do we change the first number? No. Do we change the second number? Yes, we flip it around. Let's try some together. All right, grab your paper and pencil and head with me to the whiteboard. Okay, today we're gonna do three examples. Let's begin with one half divided by three eighths. Let's rewrite it, changing the division symbol to a multiplication symbol and writing the reciprocal of three eighths. So that's one half times the reciprocal of three eighths and what would that be? 
Yeah, the opposite, which is 8 over 3. Now let's check for cross-simplifying. Look at the diagonal pairs. Do you see a pair that would have a common factor? Oh, there's one. 8 and 2 share a common factor of 2. So let's divide each of those by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4, and 2 divided by 2 is 1. Now we can multiply straight across. 1 times 4 is 4, and 1 times 3 is 3. That leaves us with 4 over 3. Let's turn that back into a mixed number. 3 goes into 4 one time with 1 left over, so that would be 1 and 1 third as our final answer. As I've said before, you don't have to cross simplify, but if you cross simplify as much as you can before you multiply, you'll always be in simplest form when you reach your final answer. Let's do another one, this time with a whole number. All right, here we've got 3 fifths divided by 4. We need to multiply by the reciprocal. That's 3 fifths times the reciprocal of 4. Now remember that 4 is the same as 4 over 1. So the reciprocal of that would be what? 1 over 4. Let's write that. 3 over 5 times 1 over 4. Now we check for cross simplifying. Look at the diagonal pairs. Any common factors for those pairs? Nope, not this time. That means we just multiply straight across and we won't have to simplify at the end. So 3 times 1 is 3, and 5 times 4 is 20. And that makes 3 twentieths as our answer, and we're done. All right, last one. This time I'm going to put the whole number first. 7 divided by 2 thirds. So let's multiply by the reciprocal. 7 will become what? 7 over 1. Now, I'm not going to flip it around because I only do that to the second number. So, 7 over 1 times 3 over 2. Now we check for cross-simplifying. Can I do that here? Nah. That means it's time to multiply. 3 times 7 is 21, and 1 times 2 is 2. We have 21 over 2, which is obviously improper, so let's fix it. 2 goes into 21 10 times. And there'd be one left over, so that makes 10 and 1 over 2 as our final answer. For more math tips and tricks, click on the links that you see on the screen here. And until next time, I'm Mr. D. Thanks for joining me.